What is faith in Jesus Christ? Faith in Jesus Christ is acknowledging the truth of everything that God has revealed in His Word, trusting in Him, and also receiving and resting on Him alone for salvation as He's offered to us in the Gospel. Christianity has so often been referred to as the Christian faith, and that term can have two very different meanings that are nonetheless related. Uh, there is an objective body of content of beliefs that we do profess. There are certain truths that we hold to be true. Uh, and so we speak of a faith that is once for all delivered to the saints, a faith that we cherish and hold dear. At the same time, Christianity is a faith because we are called to place our faith in this God uh, of whom the creeds and before them the scriptures speak so clearly. We are called to receive and to rest, as the Catechism puts it, to entrust ourselves, uh, to rely upon this one for life, for our death, for our body, for our soul. And so just as we've, in the first question of the Catechism, considered how our only hope is that we are God's, so here we address the fact that faith, in trusting oneself to another is at the very heart of the gospel story. Isaiah, in the 30th chapter of his book, uh, speaks of the call of God that in quietness and trust shall be our strength. He, he calls us to be still and to receive. He calls us to return and to rest that we might be blessed by God, that we might be saved and redeemed by one who can, in fact, change our situation, entering into this sin-ridden world, uh, coming from heaven to earth, and bringing about and effecting genuine change, that which would be worthy of hope and delight. The gospel points to the need for us to turn to God. And so, it's not for nothing that some theologians have spoken about how the Christian faith involves a displacement and a replacement. That uh, the gospel displaces our life from our own two hands. That we are not our own lords. We are not our own masters. We are not our own providers. But that we live at God's will, at God's wish, by God's grace and by God's kindness that the self is displaced by the, the statement that God is our hope in life and in death, in body and in soul. At the same time, the gospel speaks of a replacement, uh, that our abdication of rule, our abdication of playing God, does not mean we are hopeless or despairing, that we are left simply to be anxious and overwhelmed, but rather that we can renounce the task of playing God precisely because we receive God's presence and God's promise to be our God. That's what it means to have faith, to rely upon another for one's life, in one's death, for all that one needs in body and in soul. The Bible calls us to trust God in all things. It tells us that obedience and good works are not pleasing to God unless they stem from faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please him, as Hebrews 11.6 puts it. Without faith, anything we do is sin, according to Romans 14.23. We are to lead lives of faith through and through, front and back. And what we see is that faith is directed to two objects or two promises of God. God promises to provide for us daily bread, uh, real genuine needs that will be satisfied by God's provision, material, tangible, and relational desires and needs that God has designed us to look for satisfaction of. And at the same time, God promises to provide bread of life, uh, that eternal need for reconciliation and peace with God, that our deepest aches, our deepest longings, our deepest insufficiencies would be satisfied in Jesus Christ. And the glory of the gospel is that God's goodness and God's gospel promise does not simply address our temporal needs, 
nor does it simply address our eternal needs, but it exceeds all expectations. God pledges to provide daily bread, and God promises to be for us in Jesus, the very bread of life. And so, though sometimes liberal Christians have tended to focus upon this temporal focus of daily bread, sort of worldly needs, societal needs, uh, tangible physical needs, and though conservative Christians have sometimes focused on our more pietistic needs, our more spiritual or mystical, individual, personal needs, we see the Bible addresses both, that Jesus Christ promises to be for us the bread of life who really does secure for us that necessary reconciliation with God our Father. And at the same time, that God, having not held back but delivered his Son over on our behalf, will he not also with him give us all other things, daily bread, This is what the Apostle Paul celebrates in Romans 8.32 when he states that knowing God's grace in providing the bread of life, we can trust God to provide daily bread in the midst of difficult circumstances, persecutions, struggles, pains, frustrations. In every situation and with every need, we can trust that God will show himself to be a God of love because he has met our deepest and most profound need in sending his Son and sacrificing him on our behalf. And so God is a God who provides the bread of life. And God is a God who provides daily bread. And the life of faith is one of constant self-displacement and of replacement. That we replace our trust not in ourselves as we used to, but now we place it in God. We receive and we rest upon him alone, as the catechism puts it. That we live eccentrically, as the theologian David Kelsey has said, realizing that we live on borrowed breath. We depend upon the kindness and mercy of another. We are not our own lords or masters. And yet that's good news, because there is a Lord, and there is a master, and he is kind, and he is loving, And he has committed himself to our cause, and he's pledged himself to be our heavenly father. And so the life of faith is a life of constantly turning from all the imposters, from all the surrogates, from all the substitutes to which we are so prone to run. Ourselves, our society, various earthly delights and pleasures, and to displace those and to replace them with God as the ultimate source of life, the one upon whom we rest, the one from whom we receive. That's why the Bible so often pairs the term faith with repentance. Repentance isn't some sort of add-on to faith. It's the opposite side of the coin, as it were. We repent from seeking our good, in sex, in money, in power, in religious performance, in gaining a good reputation. We displace those hopes and we replace them with faith in Jesus Christ and his glorious good news that the God who has life in himself shares that life with us in Jesus and by the Spirit. And so we repent of placing faith in other things And we turn in faith to receive from God alone. This is the center of fellowship with God. This is a crucial part of the good news. Good news that we are made to flourish, but we're made to flourish dependently, receptively, faithfully. That's what it means to walk and to live the Christian faith.